Hello everyone and welcome to the start of my new RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I made a previous video where I described how to install RP2000 and also started this save. But just as a review, uh, we should check the difficulty settings here. And I've got Enable Comm Network. I've got real antennae in here and we'll see how that works out for me. I'll have the mod list in the video description of course. I have indestructible facilities just in case because I don't like my pad blowing up anyway. Uh, we've got all those check marked and we are requiring signal for control and plasma blackout and as far as the contract system is concerned I start off with a high difficulty before making it custom so I've got fairly difficult numbers as far as how much we get paid out and how much penalty there is for failing the contract. So uh, for those who are unfamiliar with RP2000, it's supposed to be a very simple career for realism overhaul and real solar system. It is supposed to be easy for people to get into if they're used to the stock uh, system. So uh, basically it's a stock tech tree at its core here, but We've got different parts, of course, because they have to be suited to real realism overhaul. But uh, the parts should basically work out the way you're familiar with. And you can build rockets normally. And then there's space for near future and KSP interstellar and other futuristic stuff. Though I haven't put those mods in here yet. So this stuff is mostly empty right now. But we will add those when it becomes appropriate. And I'll see what other mods might be necessary to make sure that the game functions in a good flow so that, you know, people can progress as they would. And I'll add more compatibility to RP2000 as necessary. Uh, if you are using certain mods like FASA, there are many mods that are compatible, but if they're legacy parts from like the 1950s through 1990s and stuff like that, um, if it's really early stuff, it'll be considered just public domain and dumped here. But if they are associated with a certain manufacturer like SpaceX or something like that, or Boeing or uh, ISRO or something like that, uh, they'll be over here and you have to give them some research and then pay them extra money for their parts. Like if you want these RS-25s, uh, they'll be more expensive than uh, the parts that you develop in the main body of the tech tree. So these will be harder to unlock. Uh, so the base cost, unlock cost will be higher, but because it's your own research and you have to develop it, but then the part cost will be cheaper. And the, because we're starting in year 2000, any, uh, stuff, I, I think I set SpaceX stuff over here. Uh, we don't have any SpaceX stuff right now, but if it's a small rocket company, um, uh, and it's like modern, then it's stuff will probably go here. So like BLM, that's the Brazilian uh, rocket. Uh, so those parts, you can play as those uh, launch service providers is the goal here. And so if you want to play as Astra and have a rocket go a little bit sideways, then you can do that. Uh, but we have the start technology only right now. We don't have any science points and we'll see how that works out for us. The small rockets pack, which is required, and again, I did a video on how to install this, uh, includes the CubeSats, which are sort of critical to the early phase. Especially useful is the sounding rockets core, which will allow you to put a bunch of stuff in, and we'll see how that works in a bit. So that requires nothing, but we should go to Mission Control, and you can see ahead of time what contracts are available in RP2000 right now. We should try and get more contracts in, but they're just all laid out here, because after all, um, we sort of know that even though if we've not gotten to the point where we could make a uh, uncrewed IO landing, we know that that is something that is theoretically possible. Uh, so, and same with all the flybys, just because you can't immediately do it doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to see uh, what might be required to get to it. So here we're going to have to research miniaturization, uh, do a Venus flyby. Uh, well, either do a Venus flyby or research miniaturization. And a lot of this is based on the old RP0 mod uh, prior to RP1. And so I haven't changed too much of that as long as it seemed to work. Now we're not going to do crude stuff just yet. So we'll set suborbital spaceflight crude off a bit. We will try. There isn't a first flight thing. You, but that's trivial. We're going to try to get a payload into space is the goal. There is also the possibility of first satellite just going straight for that. But 
we will try the getting a payload into space and I'll pick up that contract to get some extra money and we'll see if it works out. So that is our goal right now and I think I'll just time warp to morning first. We are starting in year 2000 as you can see. That is what RP2000 is all. I missed the day. <laughs> okay. I'm starting. Mm, okay. I'm not. I'm, I'm too used to the KSP2 time warps, I think, maybe. Okay. Slow down. Okay. I could just use time warp to morning, but anyway. Uh, I do have tag life support in here when that comes up. But more importantly, I have Kerbal Construction time. So what we need to do is distribute the upgrade points, which I didn't do in the previous video, the installation video. And so we'll need points in the VAB primarily. And, well, we should have some R&D points. This is how RP0 used to work. So I'll get that much and I'll put the rest in the VAB. As far as building upgrades, I don't know if they'll show the upgrades, but as far as the upgrades go, uh, the launch pad needs to be upgraded for us to have a vessel over 140 tons, so we have to keep that in mind. Uh, if we want patch conics, the tracking station has to be upgraded, just like in stock. And the research limit, as you're familiar with in stock, perhaps. Um, this upgrade doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, we do get an increase in contracts and flight planning if we upgrade the mission control. And that doesn't do anything, uh, but... And the re one reason these don't do anything is because we already have action groups enabled. Uh, that was a difficulty setting. And then the runway is the same as before. Uh, the astronaut complex, we can only perform EVAs if we unlock that. And strategies, I don't do strategies. So just assume that I'm not going to balance those out in any meaningful way. Okay, so let's get our sounding rocket core here, which will be a good start. In it is included, if we open the hatch, uh, batteries and a control core. So that's a good start. We have MechJeb here, and so let's get this stuff. If you don't want to use the sounding rocket core, there is the Araby sounding rocket telemetry unit, that's that, or the WAC Corporal sounding rocket telemetry unit. Those are old style things. Uh, those can work too. There isn't any avionics system here limiting your rocket size like that. Uh, so that's not a feature of RP2000. You can build the rockets as big as your rocket, uh, your pad will allow. You just need some control core. Uh, so I'm not trying, uh, we're not going to be trying to deal with that situation, nor do I think of this as supposed to be an economic simulator in any way. So it's just supposed to be for people to have fun in real solar system. <laughs> so uh, it's not, not rigorous beyond that. Okay, so we're just trying to get into space. We have these, the procedural tanks as you might be familiar with, and isogrid tanks and all the settings here for that. And the pricing should be reasonable. And let's try and get a conical one first. And see what engines we have. Actually, uh, we have uh, small model rockets. Uh, these are model rocket motors, the actual ones, and they last for very short amount of, amounts of time and they get their realistic ISPs and so we might as well use some for the upper stages. They fit pretty well with the solid, although the O25000 is not a good choice for this. That's more of a, a booster for lower stages. It's got a lot of impulse and a lot of thrust, 29.3 kilonewtons for a model rocket engine. Of course, it's the highest of the highest tiers of those. But we might want something with a better ISP in vacuum. And this N5800 is pretty good. But it's a little bit thin. But uh, you can see it can give 946 meters per second to this if we get it up there. It's a little bit uh, thin and long, though. As far as ISP is concerned, uh, this M3400 is uh, better on ISP. Well, uh, no, uh, yeah, a little bit better on ISP, but it lasts for a sure amount of time and gives less thrust. So it'll give 591 meters per second. But that's pretty good for a final stage. Uh, but should we try for just a series of solid rocket motors to get to space? This could be bad. Um, we could. 
uh, we can try something like that. But the impulse of that and the probability that it'll go completely out of control is high. Inside the sounding rocket core, you can put little, uh, basically Arduino units is what I modeled it after. They literally are supposed to be Arduino units. And so you can have an accelerometer. You can get a lot of science like this, uh, unabashedly. And so there are a lot of little slots here and then the thermometer. It's literally an Arduino thermometer. And we'll just action group that stuff. So log pressure. This is basically an explorer core. Log temperature. So you can do those. The goo is a bit big. <laughs> the goo is a separate issue. Can't quite do the goo. If you don't want to do solid rocket motors, there and they're mostly solid rocket motors right now, there is the Araby sustainer here. That's still available. And there's also the S2.720. This is a little engine that I found that was on eBay. <laughs> it was being sold on eBay. It's from a surface-to-air missile. It was being sold for $7,900 on eBay. That's why it's 7.9. Um, the pricing basis for RP2000 is one fund is $1,000 in year $2,000. So I think that was right. But anyway, uh, uh, that's certainly what this is set at. Actually, that's the pricing for all these model rockets as well. So that was 330 bucks. That was 680 bucks, etc. So I think it was year 2000 or year 2020 or something like that, or whenever I made this. But anyway, this is a uh, surface-to-air missile rocket motor that or engine that was actually on eBay. And it has these stats, and I don't know whether the eBay one would have worked or not. That's a whole other question. But it was there, so I decided that a potential really small rocket company trying to take a chance might be able to get it. So it is that size and you can use it as an alternate to the Araby sustainer as you can see, uh, but it's much more efficient than the Araby sustainer. So that's good. As far as uh, it's a uh, test light limit is 150 seconds. I think it actually had a fair burn time though. I don't know if it burned at full thrust for the whole time. The burn time on here is not correct. It doesn't understand the curves on these solid rocket motors. These are all my antennae. So these antennae won't work with real antenna? I don't know. I was hoping it would catch all antennae and try to modify them. Well, we're going to find out. Maybe I can't use real antennae with... Oh wait, this one is a real antenna. <laughs> That's so confusing. Okay, wait. Uh, this actual antenna doesn't have real antenna. This, because it has the core on it, has real antenna. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to, if for those trying to use real antennae, I'm going to have to modify these antenna parts so that they're real antenna compatible. But it looks like real antenna works as long as you have a core. So we have a core in here, and therefore uh, we don't have any tech levels. I don't know if we ever can increase the tech level. So that's going to be a rough thing. But OK, antenna planning. Well, 4,000 and 3,000, we'll need 18 decibel milliwatts for. But yeah, I'll have to see how the tech levels work. I don't know how it's going to work for us. But for our own purposes for this launch, let's just get the full 32 bits per second and set it like that. And I don't know how well the science is going to transmit. We'll see. I don't know what the rate is or whether real antenna is expecting Kerbalism. These are things I'm here to test right now. Nope, Tiny Tim's not so tiny. I'm gonna have a cluster of oh, 25,000. Sorry, they attached from the top. 
That's a lot of thrust weight ratio though. Yeah, it's cheap. Let's try it. That's the that's the Kerbal Spirit, right? I feel like I need some fins. We do have the basic fin. We also have the procedural nose cone. And here hopefully tweak scale can help us. Yes it can. We definitely need to tweak scale this fin down. Okay, I've put a mild rotation on it, and we will see how that works. Okay, so, closing that hatch, we will call this solid. <laughs> solid 1. Okay, it's got 0.21 tons, it's got 3,000 meters per second. Okay, it's on the build list. And it'll take 11 days. It's not too bad. Okay. Uh, yep. Delete and close. We don't need that. We've got double alarms now. Okay. Yeah. Let's get rid of that too. We do have a rollout time. We don't have a rollout cost, I don't think. Okay. I need to stop the one of these alarms. <laughs> the, there's a stock alarm and then there's the Kerbal Alarm Clock alarm. Worst part, sounding rocket core for all, uh, uh, safety rating terrible. Okay. Picky. Okay. Do you have science here? We do have science here. Isn't that nice? Let's see if we can transmit the science. That takes a while though. That's your 32 bits per second working, I suppose. One science. Well, you know, it all adds up. Oh, this is going to take a while. Okay, that one science done. Okay, I don't think the other science is doable at the surface. So, uh, we'll just... Oh, no, it's, it's uploading some data for some... There's no SAS. Yes, that's true. Okay. Well, here goes nothing. Ignition. Oh, shoot. Ah. Failed to ignite. Uh-oh. That one didn't fail to ignite. So they can fail to ignite. Oh, I didn't get the temperature scan in time. Okay, well, that went about as well as you'd expect. <laughs> All right, uh, back to Space Center. Maybe we'll need an extra set of fins down below. Also, the fact that the little model rocket motors can fail to ignite is a thing. The uh, test light can prevent them from igniting, as you can see. Test light is there. It may be that the uh, 12 to 20 thrust to weight ratio is a bit too much. Maybe we should, like, fire two of them separately on this first stage. So we'll have three of them and then two of them. Yeah, I think probably I should use the eBay engine again, but uh, we'll, we'll try this. Technically, the model rocket motors should be in some sort of body. But that's a layer of complexity that I did not add, obviously. Alright, throttle up, and let's see if this goes any better. It's probably, it's one of one of the motors fails, that's why, and another one of those motors fails. It, it shouldn't be this frequent, right? I feel like we're getting way too frequent motor failures here with... Uh, Who's, who's killing these motors? I want to speak to the manager here. Maybe I shouldn't have O-Scrap and Test Light, or Test Light. Okay, we need to make sure that Test Light is the only thing managing that. Um, O-Scrap is up here. Let's just take off the engine. I, I, it seems a little bit dubious since it seems to have these little message thingies, but... 
I don't know. I, I'm, I'm assuming that this means that that's it getting rid of engines and SRBs. Let's just get those off since we're using test light for those. But I'm a little bit suspicious of it right now, especially because it's got these tags instead of the actual text. Oh yeah, let's let's try it again. Um, does test light have test light has information here? We've got data units. Full burn failure rate's only supposed to be 0.5 percent, and ignition failure rate one percent. We clearly had higher rates than that just now. Well, a little bit dark here because of the clouds, and our first month has been a little bit harsh so far. But here we go again. Okay, this time it's going straight. Okay. Yeah, it, it was oh scrap killing way too many SRBs. Oh, that's an ignition failure. That's test light doing it. See, it gave a message and everything. Okay, but uh, we'll try. That's how it's supposed to go. And we've got the final one. Will we get to space? Uh, well, no. No, we're not. But we had one failure along the way. We will be able to do some science, though. No gravity scan. Okay, we got that. But it didn't get to space. 96 kilometers. But I think we need 140. Let, let's see. We did get... Oh, there's old scrap trying to tell us that it killed things. Look at all that. Debris... So complete stage destroyed. Okay, what I wanted was the contract. Yeah, 140 kilometers we need. The official real solar system height, not 100 kilometers. Oh well, I guess we'll follow it down. Is this new? Uh, I think uh, we got the lower atmosphere before. This is the upper atmosphere one. Remember, there's always still a tiny chance that it survives. I don't have Cape Canaveral HD in here right now. I wanted to make the install as simple and usable for everybody as possible. And this is where you definitely want the indestructible facilities. Just in case. Alright, well it disposed of itself. It didn't survive. Okay, I'm gonna try that one more time, hoping that none of the rockets actually fails. Uh, none of the motors actually fails. I think it can get to 140 if none of them fails. Here we go. Ah, uh, both of them failed on ignition? Gosh. Uh, and this one failed. <laughs> Look, it's supposed to be 1% test light. <laughs> 1%. I'm gonna try it again. Maybe we'll have gotten through enough of these ignition failures. It's only getting to 45 now. We don't get world's firsts, I don't think. And that's logical because starting in the year 2000, you wouldn't be the world's first, right? Okay. Yeah, all right. I'll try one more. This this is going to be the episode of this particular solid rocket. What can I say? We've already got 12.8 science. We can unlock better things than even the eBay rocket. Or eBay engine. Okay, please. The ignition thing is 1%. <laughs> ignition failure rate is 1% test light. Okay, here we go. It, 
It still killed both of them. Hmm. There's some... You can't have fuel unsettled, right? With solid rocket motors, you can't have fuel unsettled. It still... It keeps... Uh, it ke kills the same ones. It's the same ones as last time. Well, okay, it killed that one too this time. Okay, alright, alright, alright. Uh, well, I guess we have to finish this. The ignition failure rate, 1%. It, it, you know what? As it's spinning around, it increases. See that? Hmm. Okay. We're spinning around too much, I guess. Oh, all right. That's my theory. I guess we'll try it. We'll try not spinning so much. I don't know why that would affect a solid rocket motor, though. Test light. Okay. Well, so the tilt on these, I guess, we'll we'll keep an eye on it before igniting. I tried to get the speed low before igniting, right? Now yeah, wait, so that. It's not going to be too severe. That's basically straight up, though. Anyway, yeah. I've tried to wait until the the G-forces are not too severe, but that doesn't seem to have been enough. Or the dy dynamic pressure, anyway. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to keep an eye on the ones we don't light to see when the ignition failure rate is going to be low. Oh, see, that's really high. Okay, it's coming down, but we're going really slowly now. Well, I'll take it. Okay, next one. Okay. Well, I mean, I was right to wait, but I just didn't wait long enough for the ignitions. Okay. And last one. Oh, well, that should be space, folks. Let's see. I should change the skybox, too. Okay, science in space, please. And... We did fulfill the contracts, and the payload to space worked. I'm worried about the contract system. So, you know. Nice to see it working. I don't know if I can transmit everything before we impact, though. I think verifying that you were in space with a zero pressure is important, but you might have to get that some other time. Or maybe the atmosphere will slow us down enough to get it. Okay, well, we'll try and submit what we can of that. Okay, we managed it, and we, we got the contract, so we got 30000 for that. Let's go back to Space Center. And our rockets don't even cost that much. But, you know, there's all the other costs that are eventually going to come up, like upgrading the pad and upgrading the tracking station and stuff like that. So we have to keep that in mind. But for now, we have 23.6 science, and we can unlock basic rocketry and engineering 101. Engineering 101 will have some of the specialized tanks, uh, but I think also eventually lead to procedural fairing upgrades. So we have to watch out. Um, stability has two things going to it, and there's the procedural, one of the procedural fairing things and radial decouplers and stuff, so we'll want that. Survivability has heat shields in it, the small ones anyway, all one meter, two meter kind of things and parachutes, so we certainly want this. Okay, but we still have some left over, but 
not enough to unlock anything else. So that's okay. That's probably what we expect. We'll be trying to get to orbit next. Oh, some tourism contracts have been unlocked. I think way too many of those have been offered. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like Blue Origin with these high G adventures and all that. But okay, uh, we're not going to do that yet. We're just going to try to... Uh, that's crude. Hmm. Yeah, let's not do that yet. Uh, this one, first satellite uncrewed is what we want. They're being very ambitious here. All right. So anyway, that was the first episode. We've got a nice advance. We're going to try to get to orbit next time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.